Hi, this is Miss Feldman Tentori, and today's lecture is an online one, just like you voted for in the Facebook group. So this is the final lecture and wrap up for the 2016 to 17 e-business course. You have been through all these lectures in block two already. We talked about in the Aula how to build a website. Um, Ms. Moore talked about website design principles. I did social media strategy. And last week, uh, we sent you to the Google Garage to do the SEO. Uh, I am going to cover a little bit of online marketing and SEO again in this lecture. And then finally round off with website maintenance and measurement. So these are the things that we'll cover today. I'll refer to assignment two, which you are all working on now. It's due next Friday. I will cover some basics of online marketing, refer to SEO. I will give you some pointers on website maintenance and measurement. We'll cover finances and feasibility, this week's workshops and uh, next week, as well as um, any questions, which we can't really take now that I'm doing a screencast, but of course you can come and ask them in the Facebook group. So assignment two is on Blackboard. After the, watching this lecture, you will have everything that you need to know for this assignment, which is a mixture of all the lectures that you've had this block, uh, as well as all the materials on Blackboard and the workshops. If you have any questions, please come and ask them in the Facebook group. By asking them there instead of an email or a private message, then uh, everyone can help each other out as well as see each other's questions and answers and benefit from that. Uh, the assignment is due next Friday. So with online marketing, there are a lot of different models out there. This is one that I quite like. It covers all of the different things you need to think about when you're doing an online marketing strategy. In your assignment, it's up to you how you cover this. You can just briefly mention each of them and how they apply to your business, or you can focus on a couple of them. So the web design Ms. Moore talked about in last week's lecture and all the week before, I'm sorry, and you need to understand and apply the crap principles. There is a document on Blackboard and you can find a lot of information online about these and you need to describe how you've used these when you're building your own um, website. Also the web design you need to think about does it appeal to your target market so this is why you did those personas to get a really good understanding of your target market. There is a table on Blackboard we've talked about previously to help you break that down and um, figure out how to design a website and use the right images and the right word to just uh, the right words to appeal to your target market. Secondly, management in general for the online marketing strategy. There's a number of ways you can interpret this. The way I see it is having an overview and taking a proactive approach to your online marketing. So not just trying to figure out things as you go, but sitting down uh, as a management team uh, depending on how large your organization are, is if you are working just as a sole trader or ZZ Pay, they're called in the Netherlands, uh, you may be the only management team, but you might still have freelancers working with you. But it's about creating and following a plan. That's also why you did the business plan, uh, the, the business model canvas in the first assignment. So these are documents that you can use in running a business to discuss with other people about your plans and you, and um, come up with a proactive management perspective. Offline integration, you also talked about this in your first assignment. So do your website and your online marketing reflect your offline integration? You'll cover this in even more depth in IMC next term, the integrated marketing communication. But for now, it's good to just Keep in mind that everything needs to align with your brand. Does it support the activities and the goals? And you may have print materials to hand out and of course business cards or flyers and everything will have your website on there. With social media, we covered this in great depth already last week. Which tools are you going to use and why? There is a template that I've also put on Blackboard to help you work through this so you can clearly display which tools you've decided to use in your business and why and you can put information in there. For example, your strategy might be to post on Facebook twice a day or once a week or whatever your strategy is, but 
This will uh, vary depending on your business. The traffic building and monitoring. So how are you going to lead people to your website? Are they going to find it in Google or are they going to come to it after seeing an ad or taking your business card? Uh, when they do come, what kind of information can you gather about them and what actions are they going to take on your website? So these things again link to other parts of the assignment. Uh, so the persona table has a specific section in there about what actions they're going to take at your website. So it might be like watching a video, it might be looking up an address or finding your phone number or your opening times or buying a, a product. The client conversion, you'll find information about this. There's been research done. You can, you can search for if you really want to go into depth in your assignment. But with client conversion, it is also common sense that not every person that comes to your website is going to actually buy or do the action that you want. Some people might have come there by mistake. Some people that are visitors to your site are actually potentially hackers or spammers. Um, others may be not ready to buy quite yet. So it's only usually a very small percentage of the people that visit your website that will actually do what you want them to do there, such as uh, contact you or buy your product or service. So you need to think about uh, particularly setting your goals. When you set your goals, what percentage of people are going to buy? And when this is quite small, then you need to consider which ways you can lead them through to, to actually making the decision and trying to understand why or why not. One example is getting them to sign up for any newsletter. So you may have visited a website yourself, you're not quite ready to buy their products or services, but you're interested in keeping up to date. So that's just one of many examples. Search engine optimization we covered in depth in the Google Garage. The lessons that we asked you to watch on there, um, I think there were six lessons of just a couple of minutes each, will give you plenty of information for your assignment and there's lots of other information online. Planning, this relates again to the management but it does bring everything full circle. Creating and maintaining a website is something you need to do continuously. You can't just set up a website and forget about it. So now we'll move on to the SEO. So again, the Digital Garage covers this even better than I can sign up there. Uh, I had one student actually already finish the certification, which you may decide to work through uh, beyond this course. And you'll find um, well, the feedback I've had so far from students and also from watching it myself is that they take you through an e-learning course in really easy to follow way. So please go and have a look at that if you haven't already. It's not compulsory, but it will make um, <clears throat> increase your knowledge really well about, um, about websites, SEO and running a business online. There's a lot of other videos out there as well. I've just put a couple in there that give you a broad overview of SEO, but if you're stuck, there's lots of resources. Everything from just short videos to understand what it is, and then for the assignment you need to apply to your business. The persona table that we've given you, so you, there's a template on Blackboard that you can just cut and paste or copy again into your assignment. This is assisting you in thinking through what your personas and your target market want from your website. You do not have to put this on your website. You do not have to put the personas on your website, but both of them should be in your report. They can go as in the appendix uh, if you find you're running out of room. But this takes you through step by step. So the tasks that your target market are looking for on your website, this is an example about a lady that's looking for more information about yoga. And in terms of which keywords you should use, the sample search queries that you can imagine them typing into Google, of course you need that kind of text on your website. Google also have a great PDF file. I believe that's on Blackboard. If not, you can just uh, find it. If I, of course, you can find a Google document via Google. And there's plenty more videos online you can watch. Google Analytics is even one step further from the, the uh, 
analytics that are within wordpress.com itself. They're fairly basic and I find personally that's all I need to use. But if you want to take it even further, uh, it's not necessary for this assignment, but if you're working with websites in the future, there are even more free online courses from Google to learn about this. So let's move on to maintenance. So with maintenance, why would you maintain your website? So here's just a couple of reasons. If you have out of date information, it will lose your customers. It seems like common sense, but I'm surprised how many times I will go to a website and the information isn't up to date. Even big websites like uh, I think it was PostNL recently, I had to go um, and uh, post a pass. Oh, get passport photos taken. That's right. And the information about where I could get passport photos taken was completely out of date, which wasted about an hour of my time. So incorrect pricing, out of stock products, all that kind of stuff should be taken off immediately. That's part, part of your website maintenance. Make sure everything's running smoothly. Um, my Dutch Australian website, I didn't check as regularly as I should have. I put a contact form on there so people could connect with me and I didn't check it. And literally six, seven months went by where I wasn't getting the emails that people sent through there. And there were some potential advertisers and opportunities in there that I completely missed. I managed to find them all later, so I didn't lose that, but there's um, a lot of things that you need to do regularly. Just make sure everything's running smoothly. It also helps you resist hacking and spam if you keep your website nice and tidy. I wrote a blog post on this. I do weekly WordPress maintenance on my website, so I must say sometimes I let it go longer than a week, um, but if you're running a business that's a lot busier than mine, you, you may even check it daily. Here's the tips that I gave over on that blog post. So firstly, just literally open and look at your homepage. Does everything look okay? I had a friend in Australia running a website a few years ago that she opened her homepage and it had been hacked and there was a, a symbol on there that was not something that, uh, that she wanted people to see. So you might just take for granted that everything runs smoothly, but you need to check regularly that all looks okay. Um, to see if there's any issues with your domain name. For example, if you let your domain name expire, I have a couple and I've also made this mistake where um, I thought that auto renew was on, my credit card wasn't up to date and I literally lost my domain. Thankfully, no one else grabbed it in that time and I was able to just renew it and put it back online. But if you are not um, keeping your domain name up to date, then your website just might not be working and you might not know about it. With WordPress.com, you don't have to worry too much about that if you've got the free URL, but if you've bought a domain name, this is one of the things you need. We're also working on the Hague Online website at the moment, and just yesterday I was talking to the owner and we have issues with the website looks fine in some browsers and not in others. It, it, it will, will display differently. So that can be a bit complicated behind the scenes. And again, WordPress often take care of most of this for you, but it's good every now and then just to log in and look at your website uh, from different uh, devices, like look at it on an iPad, a, 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 um, a tablet, a, a, a iPhone or Android phone. Exporting and backing up your site, again, is another thing that's not necessary with WordPress.com. But when you scale your business and grow it and sw switch to something like WordPress.org or it gets larger, then you need to make sure you're exporting and backing up your site. Not just for hacking, but uh, you know there might be changes that you've made and you want to go back to previous changes, but it's something that should be done as best practice. Run any updates. WordPress.com do this for you. WordPress.org, you need to do it manually for some and others uh, do it themselves. And just like updates that run on, on a computer, it just keeps your website uh, up to date and protects it against any um, known hacking issues. Check and action comments. You should be responding to your customers daily or weekly, depending on your business plan and, and how large your business is but it is best practice to respond to all comments, particularly on the blog itself. It looks a bit strange if, if you've got a whole stack of customer comments and the business isn't engaging with them at all. And sometimes these are a bit like a frequently asked questions. If you've got posts um, like blog posts or even pages where customers can comment, 
then there should be a response from the company on there to, to make it look like you're, you're assisting them. You also need to delete any spam. You'd be surprised how many spam um, messages you would get, but there's plugins that can help you with this to, to block them. Or again, WordPress.com do all of these things for you. So even if you've been a bit frustrated with WordPress.com in this assignment, there are a lot of things that it is doing automatically for you. Checking and analyzing statistics, so to understand where your visitors are coming from, what's the most popular section of your site, and as I already explained, you can do that within WordPress itself or connect with Google Analytics. We'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. I like this side of things because it gets kind of exciting when you start a website and you start getting the visitors coming and, and the data that you can gather on them helps you make good business decisions. There's another blog post I wrote about maintenance and measurement you may like to have a look at, which is six things I learned when I got hacked. This was coming up two years ago now, but it can happen to anyone. Um, your website is a valuable asset for your business. Even for me, I don't use my websites as much anymore, particularly now I'm teaching. I'm not looking for uh, clients as much anymore, but it is a valuable asset that you need to protect in any business. Keep things really simple. Um, I had things spread out over a few websites, so I've consolidated that now. And why I write blog posts when things like this happen to me is I learn from other people sharing experiences. So when um, things happen to me, I want to share it with others as well. And blogging is a great way to do this. So moving on to measurement, WordPress analytics give you quite a lot of information just within the dashboard. So you can log in and have a look at that. If you want more in-depth information, you can connect your website with Google Analytics. I'm not sure if you can do this with a free WordPress.com, um, actually, and you certainly don't need to for this assignment, but you can with a WordPress.org and most other websites. So how to read these? You need to figure out which terms are relevant for you and which you'll use. So I don't do a lot with analytics personally, but some companies are onto this daily. And see, for example, here, this is an old screenshot, I think from my Hague Online, or it could be a Dutch Australian website. See there that there's a peak on October 22nd. So when there's a peak, you need to figure out what caused that and um, whether you're, you're leveraging that well in your business. There's things like the pages per session. So the number of sessions is the number of, of um, visitors to the site, the pages per session, um, like the number of pages they visit, that's an average, the percentage of new visitors, the number of different users, the average session time they've spent on your site, the number of page views. So you can see that's, you know, 2.23 times. And bounce rate is when someone comes to your site and then leaves almost straight away. So that means that they've um, potentially not found what they're looking for or don't think it's the right site or, or it could be that they found they just were coming in for a phone number and they got that immediately. The Google Analytics Academy is where you can improve these skills. Um, look at things so for your assignment you can pick a few um, uh, things that you think that you should be measuring for your business and what's interesting to watch is are there any surprises you can go into quite a lot of depths uh, this is a, my dutch australian i can see here so see where people are visiting so these are the particular pages that are popular um, this is a very old screenshot actually, but it's still uh, the first Monday of the month on number five there is one of my most popular ever um, blog posts. So you know the test siren that goes off at 12 midday in the Netherlands, uh, the first Monday of every month. That really freaked me out the first time I ever heard that when I moved here. I had no idea what was happening. So I wrote a blog post and shared that uh, usually with expat groups to say if there's any new um, people uh, that are living in the Netherlands, this is what's happening. And that has continued to be one of my most popular uh, blog posts. I wouldn't know that it was that popular if I didn't track my statistics. For me, this is more a personal blog, so that 
doesn't mean that I need to do a lot of that, but imagine how you would apply it to your business. See which kind of products people are looking at, the services or, and how they're behaving when they're on your site. What, what are they really interested in? How long they stay on your site is also interesting. So you can see there that the majority of people are on your website for less than 10 seconds. That's why design is really important so that people can see at a glance how to find what they need and even if your website is what they need because you probably away yourself, you're not going to stay on a website for very long if, if it's not what you're looking for. So how do you grab their attention in that first 10 seconds? The demographics, this is really interesting as well, and I'm not even sure exactly how they track this. I believe that when you're browsing and you're logged in in your Google account, um, it gives them uh, different demographics. And also, of course, your IP and your location is, is all picked up um, by Google and when you're browsing. So you can see with my Dutch Australian site, as you would expect, the majority of my visitors come from Australia and the Netherlands. I've got quite a few in the well, a few in the states and the UK, um, <clears throat> and a few other countries as well, but not really significant numbers. You can see which browser type they're coming in on. So you heard me say before that uh, websites can look different on different sites. I'm an Apple user, so I work almost exclusively with Safari. But you can see that this statistic here would um, ensure that I go and check how my site looks on Chrome because that's how the majority of people are coming into it. A, a tip is to keep the user coming back. Regular content keeps your customers happy, but it also keeps Google and SEO happy to see that it's a fresh site, that new information and new keywords are coming in and you're educating, informing and entertaining your customers. Going on to the finance section, so the finances and fe feasibility we talked about last term and it's important to just keep in mind when you're doing all these awesome social media plans and website plans for your business, many, many businesses forget about the time and money it takes to implement these plans. So one example is if you say, yes, we should be on every social media platform, Okay, but who is going to be running those platforms, how much time it would take? And I see a lot of people saying, well, it's free, social media is free, but your time isn't free. And even if it's your business or you're using an intern or something like that, that's still, that's still valuable time. So you need to estimate. I realize that particularly when you're using a business um, and if you're using a real business in your assignment, you know that you're not allowed to use their name in this Website, of course you can in the report, um, but the actual website, you're going to have to change the name for copyright issues. And I realize you can't get data um, on all businesses, but by doing a little bit of research online, as well as the, the table that I did in assignment one, and you can see it here as well, I give you an idea of where to go and look for, for prices. Um, and scalability, if your business is to grow, how are you going to budget for that and what kind of costs um, will that take? So when I say free, also remember that it takes time and what is your time worth? So that rounds off all of the information now that you need to finish your assignment. So the workshops this week, I have done this handy checklist for you. Uh, you should be well past this now. This is also from previous lectures but just go back and make sure that you've covered all these. I know a couple of you have literally just started. If you're really behind, you're gonna to have to work really hard this week and next uh, to get the assignment in on time um, of, a, of a, a good standard. But those of you who have been working through each block as we've been guiding you, you should be nearly done. So this is just to look back, make sure that you've covered everything um, before you hand it in. And if you come to the workshops uh, this week, you should be completing your SEO and online marketing strategy, the finances and feasibility. So you've had a lot of information in this lecture that will help you with that. Complete your challenges section, um, the report format. So every report that you do now at um, in IBMS should have a cover sheet, should have your student number, should have that disclaimer that it's your own work. Even if we don't ask you to do introductions, it's good practice to always do a short little introduction um, tying together your last assignment and this assignment, for example. 
And finally, you'll need to do a screencast. So I've just done a nearly half hour screencast now. I use screencast Omatic. I have the um, upgraded version. I pay about 15 US dollars a year to record longer screencasts, but you can do uh, the free version and just record a two minute a two minute video showing me through your website or your lecturer. I have um, some links on Blackboard that you can go and uh, go and find if you need help with that or ask your lecturer in your in the workshop this week. This is the one that I use and there's a couple of examples that this isn't the only one you have to use if you've got another one that you prefer that's fine but please make sure that um, the sound is okay I had one submitted um, previously that the sound was really warped so make sure you listen to the screencast yourself before you submit it also if you upload to YouTube make sure that it is a um, uh, either a, it can be a private, I'm trying to remember, unlisted it's called. It can be unlisted, but not um, a private video, otherwise I can't access it. And put the link to your screencast and the link to your, uh, your website in the introduction, please. Remember, there's some great resources on Blackboard for you. Take a look through those. Um, there's a lot of help and inspiration there, and there's the Facebook group. So we'll see you in the workshops this week. Uh, next week is your very final week. So you need to hand in by 5 p.m. next Friday, the 2nd of December on Blackboard. Of course, you don't have to wait until just before then. You can hand it in any time from now. A print copy is not required. And please check the schedule and Facebook group. Um, I'm trying to pull together a guest lecture for next week, but I will let you know whether that's happening or not. And um, we'd love to see you there. If there's any questions, come and ask them in the Facebook group. If you don't use Facebook, um, then bring them along to the workshops. But I wish you all the best with your assignment. I enjoyed reading all the business ideas and, and research that you've done in the first assignment and look forward to your second. The resits will be available soon. Um, and a final tip that I'll give you, particularly for second year now um, at, at university level, a way to improve your grades is to make sure you use referencing well. I'm not looking for things like journal articles in, in, in an e-business course, although if you use them, fabulous. But make sure that if you make statements about things like SEO or online marketing or even the, the original business you may be basing your assignment on, please have a reference list, uh, including the web links and um, preferably also the dates that you access them is, is, um, is good practice as well. So all the best with your assignments and I look forward to seeing you in the workshops. Have a great week.